What's going on guys and welcome to my second live commentary and squad builder video here on my channel. Uh, the first one we did inform Naldo and inform Rojo. Today we have inform Tarat and second inform Destro. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please let me know in the comments and uh, please leave a like as well because um, I think the first one was okay but I'm looking to improve on the commentary side and also today, in, in the first one for those who didn't watch it, I talked about the Champions League and uh, today what I've decided to do is get questions from Twitter just to make it a little bit more interactive, get you guys in involved a bit more and I uh, hope you guys enjoy this and uh, yeah, let's get straight down to it. So um, this squad is a 4-3-2-1 of course and we start off in goal with Handanovic. Now I've talked about Handanovic many many times before, anyone who watched my Ultimate Team series will know how frustrating he was. He is an awesome goalkeeper, you know I thought he was going to be one of those goalkeepers that is good for everyone else but not me but even for me he was fantastic. So Handanovic is our goalkeeper, he was awesome. Left back we have Chris Kito of Zenit, of course he's an Italian. Um, I used him in a Russian league side before and he was very very good. Our first centre-back is Barzagli of Juventus and, of course, Italy as well. Um, this guy, I picked him up because he was cheaper than Chiellini by a few thousand coins. But Chiellini is three ratings higher or possibly two ratings higher. And he costs about seven or eight K. And they're both Italian and both play for Juventus. So if you want someone better than Barzagli, you can get Chiellini. And I'm sure he'll be uh, better for you. But Barzagli does just the job. His centre-back partner is Benatia, the upgraded version of Romania and Morocco. Uh, sorry, Romania, uh, Roma and uh, Morocco. Uh, he's very, very good. He's, of course, the upgraded card. He, I've never used him before, but he was very, very good. And right back is Conco of Lazio and France. Pretty average, nothing really to say about him, just did the job, really. Uh, our first CM is Hernanes, of course, the Brazilian that plays for Lazio. I love this guy when he was at Sao Paulo, but uh, he's, he's an awesome, awesome player. Five-star weak foot, four-star skills, high, medium work rate. You've got to love this card. Very, very good. Uh, the second CM we have is Daniele De Rossi of Roma and Italy once again very very good he's really solid um CDM or CM is his position really. I know he's probably better suited as a, as a natural CDM, but I've got him converted at CM and he does the job really, really well. I got him with a gladiator chemistry style as well and that improves his shooting and defending. Take some long shots with this guy. If you ever pick up De Rossi, take some long shots because he is an absolute belter from range. And uh, the third of three CMs is Montalivo at Milan. This guy is just like the pass master. I can't um, <laughs> I can't remember the last time he misplaced the pass. Very, very good. Uh, the right forward we have is Quadrado or Fiorentino. Uh, 93 pace, so you know what his best asset is. Very, very quick. Four star skills and a three star weak foot as well. Pretty goddamn decent and uh, very, very good on the right side. Uh, and the two that this squad is sort of built around, if you will, is uh, the first one is the left forward in form Adel Tarat. I got the Hunter chemistry style on him, so he's got upgraded pace and shooting. Um, I, I would have talked about him in the review I did, and if you want to uh, see that review I did, you can uh, click on the link in the description. So I guess that's, I'll just leave that there. And uh, also the other is a striker, uh, Destro with the marksman chemistry style, second in form Destro, again did a review of both of these players, so if you want to check those two out and uh, see my thoughts on those two players, click on the links in the description and you can see what I thought of both players, but the squad is fit, so let's get ourselves into a game and uh, let's see how we can do in this uh, second live commentary slash squad builder hybrid, the first one we won by two goals to one, or two goals to nil so um, let's make it two wins out of two, but um, yeah, today I decided to get some questions on Twitter, uh, for the first one I just talked about the Champions League and um, I'm, I'm not very good at live commentaries you guys will probably find out but uh, I think Q&A's are probably the best thing to do for this sort of thing because it makes you guys feel a lot more involved and uh, also makes me um sort of helps me sort of time myself a little bit better, you know, because I don't want to miss too many questions out. But uh, let's let's get on. Um, actually, let's get ourselves into a game first. And, uh, oh, Orange Lancy, no, thank you. Uh, let's get ourselves into a game first and then we'll get on with the questions because um, I want to uh, I want to assess the squad that we're facing and uh, see whether we can beat them or not. I, I know as well, anyone who watched the first live commentary, I said Sanchez instead of Pedro. I'm sure like 10 people commented saying, oh my God, how'd you get that wrong? Because I've not loaded that yet. But um, yeah, I want to make sure I don't make any mistakes this time when I'm looking at the other person's squad. Okay, green lads, there we go. Come on, laddie, get us into a game. White kit. Okay, come on, let's get ourselves into a game. I want to see this guy's squad. Can we beat him? Uh, 83 rated, 100 chemistry side, Czech, Clichy, David Luiz, Company, Walker, Inform, Barry, haven't seen him used before, uh, Schurler, Walcott, Rooney, Aguero and Eto. 
That's a very good squad, isn't it? I, I think we can beat it, but uh, that's going to be a very difficult game. But uh, anyway, let's get into the questions and um, let's see what we can do. So the first question comes from a guy called James, and he says, uh, Did you see that Dutch girl tweet to American Airlines about terrorism and now she's arrested? <laughs> um, yes, briefly. Uh, I didn't get to see it in depth, but I, I saw some of the tweets. And um, I, I was just so, <laughs> it just made me laugh because it's just, this is teenage trolling gone, just gone mad, you know, and that, that's what this, this world and this sort of, um, this world online is like nowadays. It's just, I just love it when a teenage troll does something like this and gets shown up. I, I remember when uh, Stan Collymore got abused by people on Twitter, racially abused, and for the life of me, I can't understand how anyone thinks racial abuse is funny. But, um, wow, how did I miss that? For the life of me, I can't understand how anyone thinks uh, racial abuse is funny. But I just loved it when he when he got, um, I was going to say I loved it when he got racially abused. Um, when he got racially abused, it's a horrible, horrible thing. But I love the idea of some, like, 13, 14 year olds doing it because they think it's funny somehow. And then getting arrested for it, you know. It's, um, I think it was last year or possibly the year before, Tom Daly uh, got tweeted at by someone. And uh, he ended up getting arrested by the police, and I just think that's absolutely hilarious. It just it goes to show how stupid some people are, you know. And um, yeah, I, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, I, I did uh, see some of the tweets, and I, I I mean seriously, I know when you're 14 years old, like the girl was, you, you're a bit of a an idiot anyway, but uh, you're not as smart and as mature. But what on earth do you think is going to happen when you say something like that? Do you think American Airlines, you know, they're going to tweet back and say, lol, a good one, babes? It's like, you know, that's a serious threat you're putting out there, you know, and whether it's meant as a joke or not, it's still a threat regardless, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I, I found it hilarious and, um, you know, obviously she doesn't get, deserve to get put in jail for it, but... Uh, um, I'm sure she'll get a big slap on the wrist, and uh, hopefully that'll uh, improve her conduct in future uh, future times. But uh, yeah, I, I did see, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. But it's just a sign of what teenagers on Twitter are like nowadays, or some teenagers. I don't want to stereotype. I mean, some teenagers. But there you go. Um, next question comes from uh, Brambo Garden. He says, "When will you be doing a podcast with Elden Ring 90?" I don't think I will be. Um, if you're referring to the Midnight Hour, I'm not going to be on that. So. Um, Oh, I can't score with... Oh, my God. I just cannot score free kicks with Tarat. I cannot score free kicks in general. I'm always so unlucky. Um, yeah, I don't think I will be on uh, his his Midnight Hour podcast, which I absolutely love, by the way. Uh, anyone that's not subscribed to El De Niro, he does a podcast called The Midnight Hour, and I absolutely love listening to that. He's, he's always been someone I just really enjoy listening to El, and not just because he's a friend of mine. I absolutely love listening to him, but... Um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever be making an appearance myself, but uh, I guess I'll have to ask him on Twitter if you uh, would like to see me on there, and maybe he'll he'll reply to you, but I, I don't think I will be on there. But uh, next question comes from Jake Henley, and he says, your guilty pleasure. Uh, I don't think I can really answer that one without people uh, laughing at me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really want to answer that, because there's a few things I'd like to say, but I'm sure people will insult me and uh, abuse me, but um, I, I don't know. I... Um, uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I can't really answer that question. I, I guess my, my guilty pleasure that I wouldn't mind getting embarrassed about is I absolutely, sorry, um, I thought he was going to score there. I absolutely love um, women's fashion. Uh, I said this before, I, I'm a real sort of, like men's fashion I'm just bored with, but I love, like, um, for anyone that knows a YouTuber called uh, The Mrs. May, um, she's a YouTuber, dates Louis Calibre, I'm sure you've heard of Louis Calibre. Um, dates him and uh, we're friends have been for about a year now year and a half and uh, we used to Skype pretty much like every other day and I used to help pick out outfits for her because um, I'm just into women's fashion but uh, that's a guilty pleasure of mine but uh, I guess I don't mind being teased about that <laughs> but uh, even so um, next question comes from wow what's going on next question comes from uh, oh wow the name is got it mes uh, memorized so I guess I do have it memorized and he says uh, Who's your favourite player ever? If you mean in FIFA, then Lucina Traore. If you mean in real life, then Ryan Giggs. Definitely Giggs. I love Ryan Giggs. Um, so yeah, he's, he's my favourite player ever. Giggs, uh, 
Giggs and I share the same birthday, actually, funny enough, uh, 29th of November. Um, Giggs has always been someone I've enjoyed watching. You know, every time I see the Man United team shoot with his name on it, I absolutely love watching him play. And um, again, I've seen him play as a winger, uh, you know, because I'm old. You know, I've seen him play as a winger, as an absolutely rapid winger from uh, for United, then moving in field to play CM. And he's always been someone I've absolutely adored watching, you know. And uh, he's always been, I wouldn't say an idol of mine, but certainly uh, someone I really did sort of uh, look up to on the pitch. And uh, it, it's a shame, you know, his uh, his personal life. Um, oh, Trout with a scorpion kick. What on earth is... Oh, God. <laughs> what on earth was he trying to do there? What on earth did the goalkeeper do there? Um, Giggs has always been someone I sort of admired. And it's a shame that his personal problems sort of made me not disrespect him and not stop admiring him for what he's like on the pitch but you know I always I always found him to be both the, the model footballer both on and off the pitch and then of course when those um, those rumours uh, started and of course when they were proved to be true I actually lost a, quite a bit of respect for him because I love uh, players that are gentlemen you know both on the pitch and on uh, off the pitch but uh, even so I, I still say Giggs my favourite player of all time I've, I've always loved watching Giggsy play and uh, there you go um, next question comes from uh, Dan John Moore. He says, uh, looking back on the season, um, I know what it is. It's uh, who's been the best and worst signings. Um, let's get the ball away first. Oh, what a goal that is. Jesus Christ. I tipped my hat to the opponent. That was an absolutely amazing goal. Um, yeah, who, who were the best and worst signings of the year? Um, uh, I think Negredo has been an amazing signing for City. Yes, of late he has fallen off the uh, the ball a little bit, but he's still been a fantastic player. And uh, actually, looking at that hand, Danovic probably should have saved that, I think. But uh, anyway, uh, Negredo's still been an awesome, awesome striker for City. Um, also, as well, for a loan signing, Lukaku has just been absolutely incredible. The worst signings, I think you've got to look at Fellaini. Um, I hate to say it, I know he's had some injury problems as well. And I, I do defend Fellaini all the time, but you know, even though he has been made a scapegoat, even though he has had injury problems, he hasn't really looked very good at all. You know, And uh, regardless of the price tag, just in general, he hasn't looked very good at all. And um, uh, Soldado as well, he's, he's been, I have to say this, he's, he's been very, very subpar. Um, in some games he's looked quite good, uh, but in others he's just looked like the most lethargic of strikers and very, very, not useless, but just not up to scratch. Um, so Soldado as well. Um, oh, great save, Handanovic. Probably, oh, someone just in my mind then. Oh, uh, Ricky Van Borswinkel of Norwich. That's, that's another good one. They spent like, what was it, 7 million on Van Borswinkel. That's, that's quite a lot of money for Norwich. And... Um, he scored one goal, and that was on the opening day of the season. He hasn't scored since the opening day of the season. And, you know, he's just been really, really, really poor. So, got to say, Ricky Van Uh There's quite a few, you can say, really. And I never like to say worst signings of the season, because I hate being critical. But I, I think those three are probably the main ones. And I'm sure you guys probably have uh, different opinions to me over who's been the worst signing. But I think, in, I think the worst signing out of all of them has been... Um, it's been Ricky Van Bolswinkel because for a club like Norwich, they need to they need to make sure their money is spent wisely, and uh, he just has not been good at all. I actually thought, and I'm I'm willing to admit this, I actually thought Ricky Van Bolswinkel was going to be really really good for Norwich. I said at the start of the season, actually, I thought that was going to be a great deal for them, but it turns out he's been very very poor, and that's a real shame as well. But uh, there you go. Um, I'm not really sure who else I would say for for worst signing. I'll tell you what as well though, I will say um, for a very good signing. I think that people should give a lot of credit to Chris Hewton for signing Leroy Fair because he has been a great midfielder for Norwich and even if they do end up getting relegated, I'm sure they'll make a profit on him because I think Leroy Fair is a great midfielder and uh, I think he's been sort of the unsung hero for Norwich this year. He's been the sort of the one player and Snodgrass as well, he's been good. Uh, that has been very, very effective for Norwich but um, anyway, there you go. Um, I'll get to the next question in just a moment but uh, he's to and he's a chance to skill. Can I do anything? Nice little McGeady spin and a roulette. And, ah, oh, I saved. It's saved again. <laughs> um, next question comes from uh, Bitter... Oh, wow, I can't say that. <laughs> That's his uh, curse name. Um, anyway, I'll say the first name, Bitter. Um, he says, do you think coin selling websites have ruined FUT? Not at all. I actually think the complete opposite. Um, excuse me. Um, I think the complete opposite. I think coin selling websites have done nothing other than help people get the players they want. And that is the truth. And I know I don't promote coin selling websites, so it may sound a little bit odd to see me uh, defending them, if you will. But the amount of hate people get just for running them 
Oh my sweet Jesus, how on earth did that stay out? This guy is actually really, really decent. He's had like two shots, but they've both been fantastic. Um, it may be, uh, it may sound quite funny to hear me uh, defend uh, coin sellers, but I have no problem with them whatsoever. As I said before, I've been approached to uh, promote coin sellers a few times, and uh, I've, I've always said no because um, I don't want to. But uh, I have no problem with them personally, um, and I actually find it hilarious that people seem to be so against them. Because all coin selling websites do is make it easier for you to buy the players you want. Because, um, let me, um, let me go, let me, oh wow, I threw, I threw away a two goal lead. Let me just say, like, I can understand the argument for people hating coin selling websites, but I can also, uh, understand the reason for people liking them. And, and for me, I, I think they're perfectly fine. Because at the end of the day, what they actually do is stabilize the market quite a bit. Um, in the sense that, that's an absolutely lovely goal, in the sense that, you know, people say that, for example, Ronaldo, uh, you know, he costs too much now and it's to do with coin selling websites. That's complete BS. That's absolute BS. It's nothing to do with coin selling websites. It's because back in FIFA 12, the reason why Ronaldo costs like 600k, now he costs like three times more than that, is because back in FIFA 12, um, there was no seasons mode and getting coins was a lot harder than it is now. There was no coin boost, there was no, uh, like I said, seasons modes, there was uh, only tournaments and only specific tournaments and uh, online single matches. That is why Ronaldo uh, costs more uh, nowadays than he did back then because it was all to do with how you earn the coins um, via playing the game. Coin selling websites, all they do is just help people get players which otherwise may be unachievable to them. And I've got no problem with them whatsoever. I don't think they've ruined Ultimate Team at all. I think, if anything, they've made it a lot more enjoyable for some people. So I've got no problem with them whatsoever. People seem to be anti-coin selling websites because of the money the people that run them make. And that is just stupid. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's nothing more than jealousy. And again, I, I, I understand that some people don't like them. And there is an argument to be made as to why uh, they're a bad thing for their Ultimate Team. But in my opinion, I think people should be a lot less uh, irritated by coin sellers and more irritated by EA Sports and their pack uh, pack ratio and the value you get for packs. The reason why coin sellers make so much money is because packs are so bad in terms of value for money and FIFA points are so expensive. And they and that that's the truth. You know, if you're angry at coin sellers, you should probably be more angry at EA Sports in general. So that's that's my look at it. And I, I know that's an unpopular opinion and people probably think I'm I'm stupid for having that opinion, but it's just mine and uh, that's just how it is. And again, like I say, I can understand why some people will dislike them and uh, they have valid reasons for that. But um, I, I have no problem with them whatsoever at all. But uh, I still don't think I'll ever promote them. And uh, it's, just, it's just not my thing really. But there you go. Oh, God, I can't believe I scored two goals quickly because I went from 2 nil up to 2-2 two -two and I thought I was going to throw it away. Uh, anyway, next question comes from uh, Lloyd Debenham. And he says, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live and why? New York. I've always wanted to live in New York. Um, I'm not sure why it is exactly. It's just always felt like my sort of city. Uh, and Joel Howarth says, apart from FIFA, uh, what other games do you play? I don't play any other games because I just don't have the time. Um, I, <laughs> I play FIFA only for footage. The only time I'll ever turn on my PlayStation is to get footage for YouTube, you know. I, I literally am, all of my video games now are, well, all I play is FIFA, and it's only for YouTube, so that does kind of suck, really, but um, there you go. Oh, I can't believe I just messed up. But, um, yeah, I only play for, for, for YouTube nowadays. I don't play for fun anymore. I just don't have the time, you know. I really don't have the time. I've always been amazed that some YouTubers can somehow find the time not only to to get their footage to play games, but also to, like, MGH. Um, I remember once uh, I was on MGH's channel, and he said, um, he uploaded a short video, and he said, this isn't from any of my career modes on YouTube, but this is from a personal save. And I was like, how on earth do you have the time to run career mode and upload videos every day and have a personal save as well? How on earth do you have the time to do that? You know, I barely have the time to upload a video every day. But, uh, yeah, I, I only play for fun, so I don't play any other games. But I used to play Call of Duty for a bit, but um, I, don't own a, I don't own Call of Duty on uh, the PS4, so I can't play that at the moment. And uh, that's going to be 5 two and the game's over. But, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, next question comes from Jamie Creek, and he says, Do you recognise names of people that comment on your videos or that tweet you? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
especially the long term subs you know there's there's YouTube, there's users like uh, IR guilty Sylvan WWFC um, there's loads more that I, I can't obviously go down the list I'll be here all day but there's, there's always quite a few and also funny enough the guy that just asked me that question Jamie Creek he's asked me quite a few questions in live commentary so yeah I do um, recognize uh, people from Twitter and YouTube especially if they are long term subs so um, Oh, we lovely. Um, so yeah, I do recognise some people, and usually it is the uh, the long term subs because of course their names pop up uh, every uh, every other week or something. So yeah, I do recognise it. It's always nice to see the same sort of people as well because you know for for my channel, I've always found that it's not about getting uh, loads and loads of new subscribers. It's always about the existing subscribers. You know, keeping the existing ones happy, and uh, it's always nice to see. Um, see uh, wow that was terrible see some people uh, stay for a long time but there you go uh, next question comes from uh, uh, James and he says should we have a minute's applause instead of a minute's silence for Hillsborough I think we should no I don't um, I think if it's uh, respect for the dead I think it should be a minute's silence um, again I got no problem with a minute's applause whatsoever I do know why some people prefer that as well um, because of course there are some idiots in the crowd that will just continue to talk through it or, or sing whilst a minute's silence is supposed to be uh, observed but for me, if it's respect for the dead, I, I feel like it should always be a minute silence in memory. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there you go. But um, ag again, I, I do understand why some people prefer a minute's applause. Because, for example, I listened to the uh, the Swansea game yesterday on Radio 5 Live. Um, or for you guys, whenever it was. It was Swansea-Chelsea anyway, um, on the 13th of April. I listened to the Swansea game on Radio 5 Live. And uh, you could hear the Chelsea fans singing. And in, in defence, it was Chelsea fans outside the stadium that didn't know what was going on. But even so, it was still very, very, very uh, disrespectful that they wouldn't have known. Um, and it was very, very horrible, you know, to listen to that. Because it's a minute's silence. And that's why I can understand why people prefer a minute's applause. Because obviously, obviously it drowns out. But, um, you know, I still think it should be a minute's silence. And uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. What is this guy doing with check? I hate it when they just give up, to be honest. Because you can't really do anything, you know. Because, I mean, you can score as many goals as you like. But it just doesn't look good. But there you go. And next question comes from Dylan. And he says, at the moment, who's your most entertaining YouTuber to watch? Uh, at the moment, I tell you what, I've actually really got into item series at the moment. Uh, Race to Commander, I think is what it's called. I've, I've got into item series. Um, I've always been a fan of item because I think his gameplay for Call of Duty is one of the best. But I've I've been really enjoying his uh, series at the moment, and uh, he's he's always fun to watch. I actually, when I wake up, and um, actually, no, I, I, well, it depends. It's it's kind of hard because um, I sort of I don't have much time to watch YouTube videos, but whenever I get time, I always like to check out items videos. But uh, he's he's probably the most entertaining YouTuber to watch, in my opinion. Um, next question comes from uh, uh, Matt Digby. He says, "What's your view on Coventry City playing their home games 31 miles from the city and not playing at Rico, Rico Arena? Uh, they actually play at Sixfields uh, in Northampton, and." Um, that's not too far away from me. I've been there before. I've visited the ground before. It's just real. It's, it's just a real insult to the fans. It's a real, real insult to the fans, and I feel very sorry for them. And uh, it's it's a real shame that uh, it's, it's come to this. But uh, I guess that's just more than football. I'm afraid some clubs suffer, and that's how it is. But I think it's a real insult. But there you go. And next question comes from. Uh, and are we going to get time for another question? Let's see. I don't think we are. Are we? Well, it depends if something happens here. Oh, Destro. Oh, Destro. I'm giving the ball away. Oh, no, I got it back. And where am I going with the ball? And I've still got it as a penalty. Ref, 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 ref. How is that not a penalty? Seriously, that's a joke. Oh, to wrap. Destro. Oh, the two linking up for the final goal. Oh, no. <laughs> Mummy. I missed the target. Okay, 5-2, so we won. And I'm not going to have time for another question, but... um. Sorry, Ian. I know who you are as well. Um, I'll have to get to your question another time. But uh, that is going to end the video, guys. We won the game by five goals to two. Dastro scored. Uh, sorry, Dastro. <laughs> Dastro scored. Tarat scored twice. Uh, I think there was one nice goal in there as well with Quadrado. And uh, I can't remember who scored the other one. But that was an okay game. We won it. That's the main thing. Seven goals. And uh, yeah, I think I did quite well in that commentary. Uh, let me know in the comments whether you enjoyed this. Like I said, I, I, I would like to keep this as regular as possible. Because it is quite fun to do. And I, I think you guys will probably enjoy it as well. If you can get involved in the questions like this one. So um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. It's much appreciated. And it really does help my channel out. And uh, yeah, please let me know uh, if you enjoyed it by leaving a comment. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you for the next uh, live commentary slash squad builder very soon.